Hello, and welcome to the Frivolous and Frugal Knitting Podcast. We're two sisters who share our fondness for knitting, the things that we create, and our love for the knitting community. And we do it all with a little twist of both the frivolous and frugal. I am Dawn. I am frivolous. As much <laughs> as I try to deny that from time to time, no go. <laughs> and in our family's birth order, I am the fourth of eight children. That's true. And you just wouldn't be gone if you were frugal. So we're glad you're frivolous. And I am Penny and I am the frugal one. And in the birth order, I am first. So Dawn and I would like to give a hearty shout out and welcome to our returning viewers. It just tickles us that you find time and make time to come and join us and travel with us through our knitting journeys. And we're hoping that you glean a nugget or two today from our musings. And for those of you who are first time viewers, we're so tickled that you came. Um, we are grateful that you made some time to view. And as always, please, if you have any questions about anything that we say, think or do, let us know in the YouTube thread. So without further ado, grab your knitting, your favorite note taking device, a sense of humor and Let's take off for episode 36. Take it away, Dawn. So I'm going to say what's around your neck, but I see nothing around your neck. Well, that's because <laughs> I'm sitting in front of the fireplace and the fireplace is going. And <laughs> in order to show this, I wanted to make sure everyone could see it. Today, I am donning, building with lace by Michelle Hunter. It is a wrap with nine different lace panels knit in um, Haiku Riley. I even put beads in this. I don't know, this quality. Um, <laughs> and I will tell you, I think I said it one other time, Dawn. Um, it's probably right now my Opus Magnus. Magnus Opus, my biggest project that I really like. And so it's a wonderful wrap, every bit of 90 to 100 inches. Um, very warm, knit on a size six. On the Frugalometer, Riley gets $4 signs. And the pattern one, because we did the uh, Knit Pearl Hunter Knit Along, which she is so great, gracious, dropping those clues free for us every week. And so Dawn and I did this together as a knit along and um, that's what I'm wearing. What's around your neck? I love oh. that shawl, man. Oh, I do too. And I gotta tell you, it is toasty warm. I like it, I like it. So plenty, you can yeah. wrap the babies in here, you can wrap it around <laughs> your neck. <laughs> you, you, it's just wonderful, what can I say? We need one of our nieces or nephews to get married so we have a fancy event to go to. There so you go. Wear. I agree because these are stunning. Yours is stunning too. You should bring that down sometime. Yeah, I should do that. Do well, um, I'm having a personal summer as well, which is why what's around my neck is what's around Opal's neck. This is a shawl I did, I think in 2018. It is Diamond Ooh. Duality. Ooh. It's Dawn. by Lisa Ross. It's a paid for pattern on Ravelry. The yarn is three Irish girls. The base is Adorn Lux. And the names are so much fun. The purple, the solid purple or tonal purple is I want to be your lover. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, only you <laughs> would choose a colorway with that name, but go ahead. And the purple with the speckles in it is when doves cry. Oh, I know. I think I followed the pattern um, as it was written and it is on a US size four. I really like it, but I, here's where I need to plan a little bit better. You don't bring a busy shawl when you're wearing a busy blouse. <laughs> but. Well, Ruby looks absolutely stunning in it. So I'm glad you're letting her wear it. <laughs> Yeah, so that is what's around my neck. 
Do well, you have any? Yeah, Monique is oh, starting the cluster cap up here. This was number 14 in my hashtag 45 hats by 45 designers. I've shown it on previous episodes. Wonderful knit, knit in Rowan Pure Wool mm -hmm. Superwash DK, which I really like knitting with that fiber. Anyway, it was knit also on a size six and it is by Sam Schwartz. I put, um, I believe on the frugalometer fiber got three to four and on the pattern, it was a, a one dollar sign. So that's all that we're displaying and sporting this morning. <laughs> well, do you have anything that is off your needles? You know, I don't. So I am going to graciously turn it over to you. Do you have anything off your needles? Oh, just one or two. I cannot believe it. Not one, but two. Oh, 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 there it is. So Megan Jane, that was a pattern we did with our last virtual knit night. That was the cast on. Um, I believe it's a free pattern mm -hmm. on Ravelry. And the yarn I used did not have labels, but if I had to guess, it is Sun Valley Fiber Superwash Worsted. And um, it's a gray and then a purple. Now the purple bled like the Dickens in the water, but not an ounce got to the gray. So that was just an oversaturated color, I think. And it is a tonal purple, as you can see a little bit of variation. So in my obsession with pom-poms, I need some help. Okay, <laughs> so let's go from small to large. Okay. Oh. Let's see, we think that's a small one. Pom-pom number one, and it looks like it's gray. It is a like a silvery gray. And mm -hmm. I do have more than one if you think I should like ice cream scoop them. Okay. <laughs> now this one, pom-pom number two with sparkles. Look at that. I don't know if it matches the grays though. That's the problem. I don't, I don't know. That's kind of a funky pom-pom, Dawn. Yeah, it is. And I don't know, I don't want it to fight with the color work. Ooh, so I think we can eliminate that one. And this one is kind of a medium. Now I'd have to, you know, blow dry them and get them all. So I don't know, small or big? That's my, my question. I don't know. I kind of like this third one now that I've seen it. Yeah. So gee, play with it and see what the viewers think. Huh. Did you just tell me to play with my pom-poms? No, no, okay. no, no, I did not. <laughs> oh, all right. So, um, object two very quickly. <laughs> I never know where to go on the frugalometer if I don't know what the yarn is. If it's Sun Valley, I'd probably give it a three. Mm -hmm. um, I love their yarn. And um, yeah, so the other one is I am done with Kisses by the Sea. I cannot wait to see it because I haven't seen it yet. Finished. <laughs> and it, I should have measured it. It was, it is big. Look how that blocked out. Come on. Yeah. Come on. That's something. Oh, yes. Yes. Oh, my goodness. It's prettier than I imagined it would be. So, um, Hohi Locatelli. Paid for pattern on Ravelry. The yarns are Ba yarns. The white is La Perla. That is in the La Jolla base. The gray and the blue are in the, um, oh, I can't think of the base. Uh, it's, the, it's the base, oh, Savannah, the Savannah base. And it has um, cashmere in it. And I have a stitch marker hanging somewhere. Do you have a drop stitch? Well, I pulled a stitch when I was taking the blocking pins. One of the pins got caught. So I pulled it. So I just put a stitch marker on there so I can go back and I'll look at it before I do. Yeah. So what do you think? It, it is, is done. Beautiful. Okay. Yeah. Do you want to know something fun? What? Yes, of course I do. I have an inquiring mind. This is for you. What? Yes, this oh is for you. What? Why? <laughs> Why are you giving me that? Well, because I remember I said I got it off your favorites page. Well, yes. Well, you are selfless. 
Oh, uh, that's you, true. But oh my goodness, you God. don't you don't knit for yourself. And then it was great because last week everybody said you look good in blue. <laughs> yeah. So well, yeah. So my, that will be I'm tearing up, sis. You did not need to do that. But that oh my goodness, uh, I am worth that. that. And of course, that was part of the ho he knit along. So I haven't taken pictures or anything. So don't expect it in your mailbox this week. <laughs> please, please. You know, I'm always three late, three months late with Christmas myself. So don't, and don't make me feel guilty and give it um, to me. I will bring that back for what I learned this week. So that's part of my lesson. So that is what is off my needles. I think the whole thing was knit on a size five. Um, I will take measurements, but it's got to go 80, 85. And I'm pleased as punch with the extra rows I put in because not only did it help use up the yarn, but I just like that extra length and that extra depth. And so uh, it blocked out just beautifully. It took up the entire bed, but um, yeah, it was good. All right. You're so gracious. Okay, so what are you working on or what's on your needles? Well, actually, let me start out by saying what I'm working on. Um, I have mentioned this several times, but I have not given a lot of detail. This is my Bits and Bobs scrap scarf, and I'm using the alliteration pattern by Teresa Shabus. It is a free pattern on Ravelry. I'm knitting on a size three. And for viewers who have watched previous episodes, you know that I tend to go with pretty bold and brassy colors. This is one of the scarves that I already completed. Um, and this one is a more muted scarf. And I'm doing that just with my leftover sock yarn because prior to starting the podcast, I used to knit hand knit socks all the time. So I've saved those and then Dawn has graciously given me her um, leftovers and remnants. So that's what I'm working on. So that's what I'm working on right now. What about you, Dawn? Well, I just cast it on. So um, nothing to show you really, but the oh. yarn is beautiful. Look how it caked up. Oh, look at that it looks like a plaid doesn't it okay so this is going to give away who the recipient is <laughs> gee which colorway is that wrigleyville <laughs> <laughs> i got this at stitches midwest dragonfly fibers it's worsted um i'm using that pattern that you've used before it's called the folded brim hat by stacy perry and i think stacy is the gal behind uh, very pink knits. Um, using a provisional cast on. So if it looks like you see purple there, you do because that was a provisional cast on. And of course, this may be the hat that gets the seven inch pom pom. We'll see. <laughs> For our new viewers, our dear sister Nikki is our AKA personal assistant who loves all things uh, cubs and bears and so um she probably would only be caught dead once in that pom-pom <laughs> <laughs> but we will have photo evidence that it was uh actually yeah. worn and because okay. she snow blows and all that i think that double brim around the ears will be i agree helpful. very ghosty yeah so what else oh. are you working on well, I'll tell you what, I am making progress. I'm going to show you first the picture so that you have some understanding of what the finished product looks like. I am knitting wingspan and I am knitting the medium size. This is a pattern by Kyle Vay. It is knit in blue brick, uh, Manitoulin sparkle mammoth in the Ibis colorway. So right now I am just at the top of the shawl and just seeing the very first color changes. So this is the right side of the shawl. I was showing Dawn. I really like that panel in the back. Yeah. So that's the back and then it's short row city. So I'm learning about short rows. And you just start to see this green fabric coming in. So. That's what I'm working on. This is a gift for my daughter-in-law. It is all knit on a size three until the bind off and then you jump to a seven. Uh, definitely for the fiber, this is four dollar sign. That's on the frugalometer. And for the pattern, I'm going to say three or four as well. 
given, not that it's not worth it because I think it's 17 or 18 pages, um, but it's far more than what I would typically pay for a, for a pattern. Yeah, what about you? Well, it's interesting you're doing short rows because I started a short row project this week too. This is a pattern that's in test. So um, I didn't ask for if I could show it. So I'll ask, uh, sometimes forgiveness is easier to ask for than permission. So Joanne Kiley, she's the owner of Magpie's Cottage in Sheboygan Falls. This is gonna be a crescent shaped, crescent, can't even say that, crescent shaped shawl. And it's gonna be called Falling Leaves. And there was my first leave in short rows. Even showing it, I don't have nice crisp edges yet. So hopefully you use a set of gradients. And so she put together an autumnal set of gradients. Let's see if I can grab all of them at the same time. Can I show? Ooh, how yeah. fun. pretty palette. And so the leaves are off to the side, so it's not center set. So like you'll see this first pumpkin-y color. It's looking a little more red to you guys, but it's it's a really nice pumpkin orange. It has one leaf. I just started the next color. It's going to have two leaves. And then the next color is going to have three. And so you go through your gradient set of six. And I believe there's a simple Pico bind off. Um, I'm just using some extra yarn from a previous project. That's Ba again. And then uh, this is Kylie. So Joanne is um, uh, dying now. And she's putting together these spectacular um, gradient sets. So uh, the pattern's gonna be called Falling Leaves. I will let you know when it um, releases. Uh, lately, she's been releasing her patterns to her website um, and not to Ravelry or maybe a combination. So as that gets closer to release, I think she'd like to release it soon if I could get my uh, needles and gear. And um, I saw one of the other test knits, they did black yarn with those fall colors. It was as spectacular. Mm. So, I hope she shows pictures of that because I think that would be a different look. It is a totally different look. And as you know, I'm a sucker for gradients and compared to the big projects I've been using, these are short rows. <laughs> <laughs> Literally and figuratively. <laughs> yeah, so I'm hoping by the end of that that I get much more comfortable. And the short row that's used on this pattern is the wrap and turn. Okay. So yeah, anything my, else? Oh, well, I was just going to say, I'm sorry, Don, for interrupting. Mine are wrap and turns for my short rows as well. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I had to watch some videos to understand the difference between wrap and turns using garter stitch, because that's what I'm using. Because I think the last time I did it, I did a wrap and turn in stockinette. Mm. And I think there's just a, a, maybe just one little tweak you make. I'm not sure to be honest. So but um, yeah, I'm enjoying that and uh, beautiful fall colors. So Super. nice, nice. I have one other item on my needles right now. So this is going to be the Crocus Cardigan. Oh, yeah. It is going to be number five in my six sweet sweaters. And I am knitting it in Valley Yarns. And it is a 60% mohair, 20% silk, 20% um, polyamide combination. And I have to tell you, I like the fabric. I like the touch. But I have finished the bottom part of the sweater. Um, yeah. You can see those little crocuses right down here at the bottom. Let me see if I can spread it out a little bit better for you. And... I just now started binding off for the sleeves. So hopefully I can finish this. This is in the six month size, knit on a size three. Wow. Fiber gets a, probably a two dollar sign on the frugalometer. And the, pad, uh, the pattern for this was one I bought years ago. And I was even tighter back then. So I'm guessing it gets a dollar <laughs> sign. <laughs> And I think you said 60% mohair. You meant 60% merino? Yes, I did. Okay. Oh, yeah. I'm not so sure you'll ever catch this simple woman knitting in mohair, just for the record. Oh, <laughs> be careful what you ask for. Hey, thanks for the correction, sis. I appreciate sure. it. Yep. 
All right. So what are you working on? Well, I bet you've been thinking, <laughs> what has Stephen West been up to this week? <laughs> of course. You've made him a family name, by the way. <laughs> yeah. I'm inviting him to Christmas. Um, <laughs> so the final clue came out yesterday. So I was able to keep up um, up till yesterday. So let me give you the big picture. Dawn, Dawn, Dawn. These are 60 inch needles and I am crammed on 60 inch needles. Okay, so uh, honeycomb, that was clue one. I'll move a little closer. These columns with slip stitches were clue two. And then this huge diamond pattern, I think was section three. Last week we did this, he called it checks. But this was again, slip stitches. And then we had to do 26 of these little triangles. Look at those. <laughs> and each one was separate. So if you wonder why I have all these tails hanging, oh. it's because you had to cut the yarn on each one. Now, I wouldn't say this was a fair amount of knitting because we're just at 500 or right at around 500 stitches. Um, but these were just putsy. But aren't they fun? They are fun fun and I like it. Busy as it is, I like it. Yeah. Now the final clue. Okay. She chevrons. Six rows or six stripes of all your colors in chevrons. So a total of six stripes. I'm going to use my three contrasting colors and then you repeat them. If you wanted it shorter, you just would do one repeat. And then of course, an I-cord bind off. Now <clears throat> I didn't start the clue yesterday because <laughs> the first row you expand from almost 500 stitches to 975. <laughs> I've never heard of 975 stitches on any project, Dawn. I know, other than like a blanket. Well, even so, then. So I went on to Google and typed in, does anybody make 100 inch needles? <laughs> Yeah, because look how bunched up it is on 60. But you know what? I'm loving every minute of it. The the really no end date now. He said, you know, maybe by the end of the year, maybe by the end of winter, mm -hmm. your shawl, you decide. So I think I'd like to help Joanne with that test knit. So I'm going to give that some love this week. Um, I will work on rows, but at 975. <laughs> um, yeah, okay. You're going to be row, row, row your shawl. So I may say, if I get this done mid, maybe mid November, I'll be happy with that. I can't imagine blacking it out. I'm going to have to like, you know, take over the living room. <laughs> yes, <you are. laughs> Block it out on the carpet. Um, I don't think it'll fit on my bed. That's going so, to yeah. Be Slip bad. extravaganza. Um, a paid for pattern. Um, gosh, I'm going to say a three. I don't know. The yarn is mode yarns um, in the Lux, the sock Lux. It's a 50% merino, 50% silk. Um, the colorway is the dark gray is coal. The light gray is platinum. The medium gray is, did I goof that up? One's uh, platinum. Anyway, whatever. They're on my project page. Yeah. And I think the pink is a mode yarn too, but I don't have the band. I think they have, a, if you look on their website, they have a very similar pink. Yeah, could not be happier. Um, the whole thing's been a good, a, a good project for me. And he did say on his last video that all the different techniques used in this shawl will all be in his fall or winter um, lineup. So I assume maybe something will be just the honeycombs or something like that. Surprised there was no brioche, um, but I think it's okay. I don't need brioche in this. Um, that is yeah. beautiful. Boy, if, if you don't mind spoilers, go to see the spoilers of the finished ones. I saw a finished one today on Instagram. So either that was a test knit, mm -hmm. but how could as of yesterday, I think there's like 20 or 30 rows at 975. And I haven't heard a single person say they ran out of yarn yet. So that's a win-win. 
Absolutely it is. So thank you for going on the journey with me. I will keep showing it as I work on the border, but I'm going to bet it's going to take me um, a couple of weeks just so I can do that test knit first. Yes. Yeah. Oh, well, you definitely are the queen of shawls. And so I can't wait to see your next one. <laughs> Some, uh, a viewer on YouTube asked, how many shawls do we own? And it's like, I have no idea. Oh, you can't count that, Don, because you have given so many as gifts. Yeah. Um, you get probably triple of what you have at home. Yeah, maybe. So, I don't know. So, yeah. oh, and um, I had my second class for the Grand Bazaar scarf oh, yeah. by Melanie Berg last Saturday. Those ladies, they are delightful. You should see them working on their lace um, patterns. But uh, yeah, that, that's been a good class to try to teach lace. That's a good lesson for me. And um, teaching has been a good lesson for me overall. So it's been enjoyable. And we have one more meeting. So can't wait to see those. I to ask, but I think it's obvious you're not knitting with them. You're just teaching the class. Is that correct? Right. I, I knit the shop model. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, that's yeah. been good. Um, yeah, boy, those ladies are just uh, very gracious and fun and they just want to learn. And so it's been a win-win. So that is all that is on my needles. So what are you learning? Well, is the juice worth the squeeze? How is that? I have coworkers who say that phrase all the time. Is, is the, the juice, juice worth the squeeze? I've never heard that expression. Oh. Well, maybe they made it up, but okay. So I'm gonna, this pattern called for a Pico bind off. And I, I wanted something a little more firm or stable. Mm -hmm. So I went back to Michelle Hunter's Channel Island bind off. She has a video. Um, she made up this bind off, I think, when she was on the Channel Islands. How's that? <laughs> now, when you see her bind off, it doesn't have these gaps. And the reason you see the gaps is because that's where I do my weed whacker cord through there. So those will close up eventually. But when I ask, is the juice worth the squeeze? Is the squeeze? Did I say that wrong? Is the juice worth the squeeze? Mm -hmm. I think Picos are a little putsy. Well, these are about four times as putsy. <laughs> There's like seven steps. Oh, wow. Times 550. So I kept thinking while I'm doing this, is that, is it worth all that extra time to get the edge that I want? And the answer is absolutely. Absolutely. This is a beautiful bind off. It's what I wanted. I think it complements the shawl. And I'm going to enjoy that juice. <laughs> yes, you are. Oh, that's such a good point, Dawn. We yeah. make those kinds of decisions when we're knitting, don't we? Yeah. And I'm sure we did this bind off on one of her knit alongs. That's how I knew about it. And um, again, for those of you who don't know the weed whacker, instead of blocking wires, I don't mind using blocking wires, but my shawls are too big. So blocking wires are about 36 inches long. Well, when I have a 90 inch shawl, I now have to overlap those wires and they pull apart so easily. Mm. And so um, Amy Schultz, um, in a shawl class, Amy's a teacher at Magpie's Cottage in Sheboygan Falls. Um, she used weed whacker cord. And I'm telling you, you can bend it, you can mold it. It's long. I had, I had extra on this. I don't know about the Stephen West. <laughs> we'll have to see about that. But um, I just pin it out that way. And I really like that look. And as you probably recall, I'm a very aggressive blocker. So um, yeah. So it was worth the extra effort to get the look that I wanted. So may I add one thing to the weed whacker cord? Yeah. I made a mistake the first time I tried to use it. I just used what we had out in the garage. And unbeknownst to me at the time, I should have known, it was not the round weed whacker cord. Ours has edges and very fine teeth. And I was snagging my yarn as I worked it through. So by the cheapest yep. round 
very smooth weed whacker cord because if you don't, you're going to snag your fibers. That's that's excellent. And then um, buy the thinnest too. You don't need that yeah. thick weed whacker. Mm -hmm. And I literally just go out and uh, steal it from the garage and um, no harm, no fall. <laughs> that's, right. that's right. I like it. What are you learning? Well, my lesson this week is I am chipping away. And that has a dual meaning here because I'm going to give you Nikki's quote. What would Nikki say? And then I'll explain what I'm learning. So here's Nikki's quote for this week. Knitting and chipping are much the same. And for those of you who are new, our sister Nikki is an avid golfer and she participates in our knitting and has learned all about it, but her passion is golf. Knitting and chipping are the same. Both require you to take your time, enjoy it, and then you will eventually have a positive outcome. So chipping, if I understand it, and, and Nikki, if I'm wrong, put my corrections in or the corrections in the YouTube thread. It's my understanding that chipping is a technique in golf where your ball is right off the green. It's out in the course. And that grass is much taller than what's on the green. So there is a technique where you literally make this short shot. You come under the ball and you chip it. So it's kind of a quick action. And the purpose is, is to get the ball as close to the hole or the pin as possible, to get it off that thicker grass into the grass that's on the green. I guess chipping is quite a technique and it's something you have to practice and practice. So it's all about taking those small steps that you need to get to the finished project. And that's what I'm learning in wingspan. These short rows are putsy. I am revisiting them over and <laughs> over and over. For every one row that goes across, I have two actually four short rows that I'm working. So I'm only like on row 26 on the shawl and it's like chipping. It's I'm, I'm trying to get up on the green so that I can bring the shawl home and sink that ball in the cup. And so I'm learning to look at it differently. I'm just practicing my chipping, my chip shot. That's all I'm doing. Yeah. And if you hold that shawl up, if it's handy, for those people who don't understand short rows, I think it's amazing when you told me you're on row 26. So show them where the center again, where 26 rows is. So this portion of the shawl are the 26 rows where I'm at. I have knit across, back and across the shawl, a total of 26 rows. However, short rows allow me to increase <laughs> in segments. Obviously, my outer row, my outer stitches are going to be the widest part of the shawl. They get the greatest amount of increases. If I just go back and forth here, I'm increasing those stitches without affecting the center. Yeah. So you work one side, then you knit across, and you work the other side. So it's symmetrically increasing so that you can see by this picture, this is one side of the shawl. There's an identical side on the opposite on her, across her back. Yeah, that's amazing. Isn't that? Yes. So I'm practicing my chip shots, right? Yeah. That's all I'm doing. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. <laughs> but it is so interesting to see it grow to the periphery, yes. you know, because that's a hundred rows to me. And yet it's, you're on row 26 on the pattern. I am. And I am really trying to perfect this as much as possible because the designer, Kyle Vay, says in the pattern that we're, the, the goal is that maybe for some of us who are intuitive, we will pick this up and we won't have to follow every line of the pattern. I'm not there yet. I have my adhesive sticky tape that I'm using row by row by row. I, I know now, and I've memorized some of those short rows, but intuitively, I don't know yet when I have to make those huge crease increases. So there are rows where I have to make two in one stitch rather than just to make one. 
Wow, yeah. that's a big lesson. It is, and it's fun. And I am really hoping that I get this down in such a way that I feel comfortable with my wrap and turns. And I can see those in the pattern a little bit easier. I'm still learning how to read my fabric, but that's my goal. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So what is going on with frivolous and frugal? Oh, I got to tell you, last night during knitting with the aunties, we had a random number generator selection for the finish fixer frog at Cal. And if you're not a part of that, we encourage you to join. It's a thread in our discussion board. And what we have is a forum where you can either show us where using pictures, you've either finished a project, you fixed it, or you've decided to frog it. There was some frogging going on this last <laughs> week, wasn't there? So anyway, I am tickle pink to announce one of our more active and um, voluminous, actually, her projects are voluminous. She just has oodles, almost, I would say prolific, in her knitting was selected, and that is the Bat Na Lady Knits. So Miss Dog, Congratulations, you were this week's giveaway winner. I will be sending you a bag from our dear sweet Miss Sandy and a skein of yarn. If you will just email me, or did you say you were going to do it, Dawn? Yeah, she lives in my neck of the woods, so I'll take care of that. So, so she can. Uh... Dawn, yes, your mailing address, and she will get you your gift. Thank you for all your participation and all that you've shared with us. And actually, the post that won was the post where you decided to make a crocheted brimmed hat, which, by the way, I thought was very, very pretty and elegant. So thank you for participating. And she made that after she frogged a shawl with that yarn. I know. So is that not like the epitome of finish fixer frog it? It is. Yeah. It absolutely is. And you know what else I get a bang out of reading those is how encouraging and complimentary people are to each other. It is just so nice to see that back and forth, uh, you know, cheerleader, go get them, hang in there. Um, yeah, some beautiful, beautiful projects. Um, so yeah, thank you. That's been fun. So um, I, I was uh, thrilled when she was picked. Yes, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, no, I was just I was I was glad. Um, yeah, I was glad we had a winner. Our next drawing, if you are curious, will be during episode 40. Yes. Um, YouTube, how's YouTube going, Don? We're doing great. We have a we have a viewer from Brisbane, Australia. <laughs> That's right. So um, it's it's amazing again. We're we're growing. We're like a little over 950, I think, viewers. So we're getting close to that thousand mark. Um, Lots of Canadians. We're seeing people now from Europe, all over the United States. Um, it is. It just tickles me pink. Um, the comments that people write are always so um, positive and uplifting and funny. By the way, some of them. So <laughs> we enjoy every minute of reading those. And then, of course, with knitting with the aunties, we all have to um, chat about <laughs> what people are saying and doing. So. Uh, yeah, that's been excellent. We will probably episode 38 do another YouTube. That sounds good. And I did happen to get to knit for a few hours last Saturday with Miss Sandy. So How the, fun. she's amazing, doing well, um, crocheting, sewing up a storm. So uh, it was delightful. We met in Sheboygan and knit for a few hours. So that's always a treat. Yes, thank you so much, Miss Sandy, for graciously giving so many project bags to give away. Can't thank you enough, darling. Um, I also wanted to mention, too, that we have scheduled on November 14th, our November virtual knit night. It will be from 7 to 9 Central Time on Zoom. As always, we will post that link about an hour ahead on the Ravelry thread. If you are not on at Ravelry, please email me and I'll add you to the email list that I send out. So we encourage you to join us for that. And I think the hat that people are going to cast on, if you're interested in, I'll put it at the bottom of the screen as Autumn Weaves. 
beanie weaves with a w because i kept typing in leaves like autumn leaves <laughs> so it's autumn weaves so if you want to cast on with this that would be great absolutely and honorable mention this week we know that you mentioned miss sandy dawn right yes we're so grateful for that but i have another honorable mention our dear miss Brittany b wing on ravelry sent me a suggestion after I posed this question in last week's episode or in episode 35. I said, I think what people need to do, someone needs to create a project bag with a see-through vinyl bottom because I lost a hat in the only project bag I use. How could I lose a hat in there? It's because I couldn't see it. And so that's why I stick with my Ziploc bags. Well, Miss Brittany so delicately and kindly said, you know, Miss Penny, I have a friend who makes bags like that. Oh. And I think you're going to love them. And the name of the company is Knickknack Knits Company. And their um, website are posted in our show notes. But here is a vinyl-sided project bag by Knickknack Knits. And as you can see, it has a fabric bottom, which makes sense to me. And it's not so tall that I can't see what's in there. Has the vinyl sides, drawstring top. Oh, I They've like got that. their little label in there too. Now, if that isn't just cute as it is right there. And then it also has a handle. I have to tell you, this is their small uh, sock project bag. So for those of you who are going to join us for our December knit along. We're going to do a sock cast on. We're going to be um, casting on Miss Irene's row by row sampler sock. I would encourage you to go to their website and maybe think about a vinyl project bag. Reasonably priced and they have Christmas material. Oh, now, I what I didn't realize, this matches exactly. <laughs> it matches that. my Ibis um, yarn. Yep. So anyway, thank you, Miss Brittany, for passing those nuggets along. We cannot thank you enough for sharing all those tidbits. And one last honorable mention, we have befriended MB Misty Blue on Ravelry. And we can't tell you, Miss Misty, how it tickles us that you share such wonderful insight about not only knitting, but about the podcast in the Ravelry world. We just want to thank you, darling. Yes. Yes, Dawn. I'd like it. <laughs> okay. I got a package from Canada. <laughs> All right. So my, my, my beloved Canadian friend, Miss Norma, we did a US Canadian yarn switch. Now, I hope she trusts me. Her package is in the mail. She hasn't got it yet, but I got her package and yeah. I'm going to have my yarn drop. So I'm going to bend over and I'm going to try not to show cleavage. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you do, we'll wait and tell you after the episode airs, just so you know. After all, it's not your husband walking across the back in his shorts. <laughs> So look at this. Oh, Dawn. It is beautiful yarn. And I, I kept the ball band. Rose Hill yarn. I believe they are a Canadian indie dyer. And it is called Holly and Spruce. Will these not make like spectacular Christmas? So it's showing up a tealy on the screen right now, but that is more, there's a little more green in there than there is blue. That's a fingering weight. It is luscious. Oh, it is perfect. <laughs> and then look at this. This is a bear yarn. It's ivory. But what's amazing about this, this too was a um, local sheep, local mills. It's called Canadian U. Oh, darn. And it is fingering three ply, but what I've never did with, it's half BFL. So I think that's Blue Face Lester or Leicester, and then half Romney. And she said they'll make delightful socks. So I may use this for my Christmas 
Eve Caston of Irene Socks. Good idea because yeah. that pattern definitely showcases um, a solid or tonal. Yep. And then a cute little progress keeper from Ginger Snap That. I know that's not showing up, is it? It's a little bunny. Oh. Oh, sorry, you can't see it there, maybe a little bit. But yeah, Ginger Snap That is an Etsy shop. That's what I got some yarn from them a couple of weeks ago. So I think I need to move to Canada. <laughs> <laughs> so well beyond anything I could have expected Miss Norma that rocks I can't wait for you to get your box too so um yeah that's an honorable mention to Miss Norma oh what a wonderful way to end the episode yeah, Dawn absolutely Just knowing that we're part of a community that's like you said earlier gracious kind encouraging and and we don't take that lightly and Neither do we take your time lightly. So this episode <laughs> is coming to an end. And as always, Dawn and I hope that you, your week will be a sweet twist of the frivolous and frugal. Have a great week and we'll see you for episode 37 soon. Bye-bye. Bye everyone.